we have to talk about what you all are feeling. How are you uh, feeling about the direction of our country and where it's headed? Are you hopeful or not? So there are a couple of new polls. I know how you feel about polls, Jeff, but these polls show that Americans are actually pretty pessimistic. Nearly 75% 75, 75 of you say no. They feel the nation is headed in the wrong direction. And just 21% think yes, we are headed in the right way. More than half, 58% feel like America's best years may already be behind us. So DBL Nation, we wanna hear from you. Again, how are you feeling? Are America's best days behind us? Yes or no? Go to dblvote.com to, to weigh in. What would you say, Jeff? Listen, I don't wanna be a pessimist in this situation, right? I I want to be an optimist for how much I complain on this show about everything in life. I really am an optimist, right? I'm always trying to take the other side. And on this one, I'm going to take the other side as well. I think who we are as Americans is kind of reflected in our social media. But we have to remember 10% of the people write 90% of the content on social media. And the problem I think we're having in America is that some of the bigger names or bigger leaders or bigger companies are starting to adopt some of that 90% garbage that's on the internet and people are adhering to these made up rules. That's where I don't like. If we have a good leader, a good one, under 195 years old right. that could run this country, right? We might be headed in a better direction. Start putting out more positive messages. Start leading by example. We're just a mess politically, and then our, our, I think our, just, um, our social media fuels that fire. And I know what you mean now, it's like a mirror. It reflects it back. I'm, I'm just concerned. We've had the Great Depression. We've had the Dust Bowl where you ate rocks and leather. We had wars where you had to give up butter and soap and pear. We've had you it worse. You should be sitting on a tree sump okay. telling us the kids. I'm just saying we've had it worse you're right. before. Jim but Crow. Jim Crow. If you were a person of color or right. woman or Irish, Italian or Jew, not so good. Or a member of the LGBTQIA the community. Absolutely. We've had it worse. However, what terrifies me is the reality on one side isn't seeing the same thing I'm seeing. And when you have that and you're not speaking the same language and facts aren't facts anymore, we don't have a unified anything and it explodes. That's anarchy. That's what I'm concerned about and it's actually very political. No one, everyone thinks we're moving the wrong direction, but both of us are thinking we're going this way, not that way. It's very, very interesting. What do you think, Al? I, I, well. It depends on if you're looking at things on a micro level or a macro level to where you can just leave your arms okay. like this. You know, I, <laughs> when, when you're looking at things on the macro level, those are big stories that are going to be covered by shows like ours. So we're going to cover George Floyd. We're going to cover, you know, uh, the, you know, BLM or the January 6th. Those are big things. And so people think that that's what life is that day. This is how it is every day. But I feel like the small interactions, the things that happen between people person to person, aren't like that, but those don't get covered. If, they, if, if everything was January 6th, everything would be in chaos. But for the most part, it's Jeff making sure that his kids get to school and helping people out. Sam doing the same thing, me volunteering without posting it. There are things that people are doing to move the country forward, but it's very difficult because there's no money in that. And in America, if you're not selling anything, our country is like, well, then why the hell are you doing it? So if until we can separate capitalism from just human beings, especially our form of government, we're done. Because when you are MAGA or you are BLM or you are LGBTQ, there's something there for you to buy. A T-shirt, a hat, Alex Jones, brain buzz powder, whatever. <laughs> it's just there because they find out what you want. They find their demo. And they sell you stuff. I understand that. And I totally agree, actually, with all three of you. And I do think social media is a lot of the culprit because it, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what side of the issue you're on, shapes your mind. And it's and curated it, towards you. But and that's pins very dangerous. you against the other side. Yes, yeah. and that's very dangerous. But I will say, even though you look back, you know, 50 years to your point, Tori, yes, there's no Jim Crow. There's, there's a lot of things that have improved. Same-sex marriage is legal. But then you also look at the fact that the criminal justice system is still disproportionately unjust and unfair. And how, do, how does that person feel if their dad is unfairly locked up? How does the person feel who is 16 years old and just learned that they're pregnant and they're in a community where they can't 
get an abortion. So I think it's how does the person feel who lost, you know, their child to a, a, a mass shooting, whether it's in a theater or a farmer's market or a school. So I think it depends. It's subjective to that person. And it, I, I can't understand how some people feel like we're going backwards. If you see Roe v. Wade being overturned, if you look and you see there's another school shooting or another mass shooting, it feels like our country isn't safe. If you're working in a gig economy and you can't buy a home, but 50 years ago, your grandparents were working a normal nine to five, nothing. Maybe just one was. One job and they were able to buy a home so I think it depends on the individual and I don't want us to be more divided if people don't feel like that we're at the place that they hope for us to be mm. I think there's room for everybody here well the country doesn't work for everybody and that's the that, that that's the saddest indictment of our country that we don't we we go after the people that are on the margins we take away you know their you know what little health care they have we take away you know uh, the, the teacher tax credit right. like we took that away people are hurting like, and, and it's just like you, you know this is why we are here because we are able to demonize the poorest people in our country we, our poor people are fat they're, right. they're overweight because they're, they're eating terrible food they live in a food it, desert yes so like there are reasons that we're seeing everything but those unexplained so it's easily rhetoric is easily just like oh they're lazy they're fat that's why they're poor Narratives. they're not like our grand again yes. it goes back to what Jeff is saying but I do want to reveal what our viewers say 68% or 66% of you say yes America's best days are behind us while 34% of you say no so what do you think is the number one issue facing the country. Well, another new poll says that the growing threat to democracy is the most important issue. Tori's already shaking her head. Yeah. The cost of living came in second. And look at this. 57% of respondents say that investigations into former President Trump should continue. So what do you think? Should these investigations continue? And what do you think is America's biggest issue? If you say America, I can talk about cost of living, getting bread, getting dairy, of course. But if you have politicians that represent us in actual Congress, like Lauren Boebert did, said we need more state and God, you are treasonous to the what America means. I'm scared mostly because of democracy evolving into nothing. We have just changed the idea that people on the bench are going to be talking about what they want for their religion. That shifts the entire narrative. So for me, America is about the transfer of power peacefully. No other country can do it as easily as us. We are known for that. That's what a democracy is. Already, we're having coups, attempted coups. We're having police people killed. But that's killed. because those people feel like they're living under an unjust democracy. They feel, I don't agree with it, but those people feel like Obama was not an American. Absolutely. So that was eight years where they felt like they were living behind enemy lines. And now they've been sold this idea that the election was stolen. So now we have people that have, for at least the last 12 of the last 16 years, they feel like they're living in a corrupt democracy. But that's democracy. a lie. I, that is a to lie. To you, not to no, them. No, no, objectively. I agree, Tori. I'm just saying, like, to them. No, I'm not yes, saying you, you. Because I'm we all get. To people who say it's up to me in my narrative, no, it's not. The election was not stolen, hard stop, period. Done. I'm done. If you keep saying it is, you're saying that water isn't wet. The earth is flat. That's a conspiracy theory I will not allow on the show. I won't. Done. Sorry. No, that's a strong take. Yeah.